Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to uh, Carnegie Mellon University in Qatar. Uh, I'm Michael Trick. I'm the dean here at CMUQ, and it is my pleasure to introduce the first dean's panel of the academic year. We created this series as a forum for open discussion on questions that are topical and relevant to each of our areas of study. At CMUQ, we offer degree programs in biological sciences, business administration, computational biology, computer science, and information systems. In each of these areas, there are specific issues, challenges, and opportunities. And the Dean's Panel Series is a way, into delve, uh, way to delve into these issues. Now, some of you may not be familiar with Carnegie Mellon University, but we have a unique approach to education. In each program, we use real-world problem sets so that our students learn more than just theory. They learn to analyze and solve complex practical issues. It is in the Carnegie Mellon vision statement that we will have a transformative impact on society. For us to have meaningful impact, we must first understand the issues that industry leaders, policymakers, and government officials are facing. And that's why today we have brought together this panel of experts who will help us understand more about the pharmaceutical strategy in Qatar. Today's topic is one that's closely connected to the field of biological sciences, and I believe that the insights that we will hear today will deepen our understanding of the pharmaceutical landscape in Qatar. Today's moderator is Dr. Ehab Yunus, who is an assistant professor of biological sciences at CMUQ. Professor Ehab earned his PhD from Ohio State University in molecular, cellular, and developmental biology and trained as a postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biophysics at the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine. He joined the CMUQ faculty in 2015. Again, thank you for coming today, and I now invite Professor Ehab to introduce the members of our expert panel. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon, and thank you all for joining us today for this panel discussion on the pharmaceutical industry in Qatar. We're going to focus today on the industry strategy. But first of all, I would like to say that I'm greatly honored to be here sharing the stage with this group of experts and leaders. And thank you all for joining us today. And so before we start, I would like to introduce them to you. But uh, <coughs> sorry, for the sake of saving some time, I'm going to try to summarize years and years of prosperous careers in a couple minutes. So I apologize to any of you if I'm gonna miss some milestones in your careers in my introduction. I just need to uh, save some time for the discussion rather than the introductions. So without any further ado, on your program you had Dr. Aisha Alansari as our panelist. Unfortunately, Dr. Aisha had an urgent commitment she had to join. So instead, we have Dr. Imad Mansour, who is uh, responsible at the Ministry of Health, responsible for local ph pharmaceutical industry in Qatar. So thank you for joining us today. We also have with us Dr. Ahmed Al Muhannadi. Dr. Ahmed is the Chief Executive Officer of Q Life Pharma. Dr. Ahmed holds a PhD in electronics engineering from University of Kent in the United Kingdom. His thesis work focused on the application of analytical placement techniques for floor planning in VLSI design, and don't ask me what that means. He also received the master's and a bachelor's degrees in electrical engineering from North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University in the United States. He started his career in 1989 as the director of the computer department in the Ministry of Interior in the state of Qatar. In 1999, he became the director of the statistical department at the Council of Planning before becoming the director of electronic government or eGov, as we all know it. Since 2005, Dr. Ahmed has been serving as a senior advisor for the Supreme Council of Information and Communication Technology, ICT. Dr. Ahmed also has an impressive tenure in academia with several publications. He worked as an assistant lecturer and then a lecturer in the electrical engineering department at Qatar University. He also was vice dean at the Faculty of Engineering at Qatar University between 1994 and 2000. And now if you're all thinking, 
So what is an engineer and an accomplished academic doing on a panel with for discussing pharmaceutical industry in Qatar? So let me enlighten you by saying that Dr. Ahmad here is the CEO of the first licensed pharmaceutical facility in Qatar for drug production, which is called QLife Pharma, where they manufacture several drugs, including anti anticipate, semi-solids, and oral liquid medicines. Dr. Ahmad, welcome, and thank you for joining us today. We also have on our panel Dr. Salvino Sal. Vaggio. Dr. Salvino is Senior Director of Impl Implementation and VP RDI Office Management. Dr. Salvino brings over 29 years of work experience with extensive skills in general management, business planning and implementation, investment and portfolio management. His industry focus is mainly on the innovation intensive sectors such as ICT, telecom, bank and finance, agribusiness, media, healthcare, data analysis, amongst more. He is responsible for enacting initiatives and new programs across Qatar Foundation, RDI, Research Development and Innovation, and other RDI players in Qatar Foundation. Dr. Salvino was previously the Director of Implementation in the Qatar Foundation CEO Office and Industry and Analysis and Grants Management Director of QSTP or Qatar Science and Technology Park. He actually played a key role in establishing QSTP in 2005. He managed and reviewed applications for the QSTP Product Development Fund. In fact, over the years, he has taken on many roles advising QSTP on funding, on funding vehicles, and assisting with the launch of large projects such as the Robotic Surgery Center and the Qatar Mobility Innovation Center. Dr. Salvino has also worked for McKinsey and Company, Accenture, and a number of universities and research centers around the globe, while also overseeing his startups. He taught digital humanities at HBKU and has published several academic articles, gastronomy essays, restaurant reviews, and even a novel. In fact, his novel have won two first European literary awards. In 2007, Dr. Salvino was awarded one of the highest Italian civil titles when he was named Commander of the, Public, of the Republic. Dr. Salvino, welcome and thank you for joining us. Last but definitely not least, we have Dr. Omar al agnaf Dr. Omar is the Acting Executive Director of the Qatar Biomedical Research Institute, or QBRI. He received his PhD from the Queen's University in Belfast in the UK, after which he was postdoctoral scientist, first at the School of Biology and Biochemistry at Queen's University, and then at St. George's Medical School in London. He was awarded a research fellowship from the Parkinson's Disease Society in the UK to establish his research group at Lancaster University. After that, he joined the biochemistry department at the College of Medicine at UAE University. In 2014, he joined HBKU, and since 2016, has been serving as the acting executive uh, director of QBRI. Let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Omar's, Omar's research career, which is stellar. He's considered a pioneer in the field of Parkinson's and related neurodegenerative diseases and the recipient of eight regional and international grant awards. Over the past 20 years in his research group, they published 120 articles and built a reputable portfolio in the Middle East and around the world, placing his lab at the forefront of neuroscience research internationally his discovery not only have great impact on scientific research community, but also offered new opportunities for the development of novel diagnostic and therapeutic tools for Parkinson's disease. Under his directorship, QBRI won the 2017 Arab Best Research Institute of the Year Award. That is due to the fact that as director, Dr. Omar focused his effort on improving and transforming healthcare through innovations in prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of disease, 
of diseases affecting Qatar and the region. Dr. Omar also established robust alliances with biotechnology and pharmaceutical companies. He actually has a notable experience in licensing products stemming from novel research. He himself is the recipient of six patents with additional six under review. He understands how such activities can be used effectively, effectively to facilitate successful innovation. Dr. Omar, welcome and thank you for joining us. Now, this, the Q&A session is going to split into two parts. I would like to first ask each panelist a question and get, us, get their perspective on the ph pharmaceutical industry in Qatar, and then I'll open the floor to the audience for questions. We'll start with Dr. Ahmed. So Dr. Ahmed, as the CEO of the first licensed pharmaceutical company in the private sector in Qatar, we would like, we would very much appreciate your perspective on how the state strategies align with the private sector when it comes to the pharmaceutical industry. Thank you very much. It's, it's really my pleasure to be uh, here with you. Uh, and uh, I hope I can highlight that in the time, limited time, highlight about pharmaceutical industry and uh, uh, the government of Qatar and what, how they are looking at uh, this, ki this kind of industry. I think uh, doctor already gave my story, so I'm not going to say anything about the story or anything, but we focus on the pharmaceuticals. Uh, my, my facility, which is a Q-Life Pharma, is license one in Qatar. And uh, I think I would say it is a destiny that I am as a, as a microelectronics uh, doctorate in uh, engineering and all that coming to a pharmaceutical. But uh, I think pharmaceuticals has a lot uh, in engineering. For Qatar, really, Qatar is part of the GCC countries. And uh, at the time, there, there is no really intention to say we have to have a facility in Qatar because we have the, the Central Tendering Committee in the, in the G, uh, SGH in, in, in Riyadh, and on most of the medicine comes to those countries from this uh, tendering. But Qatar really, uh, unfortunately, with the, what happened with the, this uh, embargo, Really, Qatar right now, the government of Qatar and uh, the government society and the business people looking for having a real pharmaceutical industry in Qatar. Uh, lucky that I started in 2010, because when you establish a pharmaceutical company, it takes you years, really, to, to get it running, because there are so many certifications. And here, Dr. Imad and uh, Dr. Hassan there, uh, they are part of the regulatory, and you cannot do anything without passing through that uh, department. Dr. Aisha Ansari also, she is not here, but she is one of the people who are always regulating and uh, following every step that we are doing. Uh, Alhamdulillah, thank God that uh, now we are uh, third time uh, certified GMB, good manufacturing. So when we look at the pharmaceutical, it's a wide range of, of, uh, of industry. You cannot say pharmaceutical is just one plant or two plants or three plants, but maybe N plants. It depends on the type of product. So we are in the generic. We have three lines, uh, syrups and antiseptics and uh, ointment cream and also some sort of solid dosage. And we're going in the direction of the generic. Now, because this is uh, something new to Qatar, Qatar always importing. And now you say, okay, I have a uh, manufacturing and we want to uh, look at the local products. Now, how the local products would compete with the international? How are you go going to develop? How are you going to grow? It all takes a lot of processes. Of course, the regulation of Qatar, and especially in the Ministry of Health, going with the tendering. And now they are looking at their laws and regulation to look, we have now, we started facilities and manufacturing in Qatar. So now they're trying to uh, orient some of their uh, laws to fit you know, the local uh, manufacturer. So for the time being, because uh, maybe I, I'm the only one or uh, one with me, still the thing is it's coming, you know, toward uh, legislation that would happen very soon where part of the pharmaceutical requirements of, of Qatar would be consumed from the local manufacturer. And from the quality aspect and everything, there are responsibilities of the, uh, the 
regulatory department and it's our responsibility first to always follow the GMB rules uh, and, and laws uh, and the who uh, type of uh, processing and production and everything. So uh, to me, I feel that Qatar, inshallah, after what happened now, I would say Qatar is no more like before June uh, month, you know, fifth. Uh, no, and we are now different. And we have to uh, do something with the, with, the, with the world. We have to be part of the world. We have to be productive. We have to leave a fingerprint. So uh, a contribution uh, is going to be coming soon from other manufacturers. Maybe I'm just only the, the, the beginner and the frontier, but I'm sure there are many people who are thinking about having their, their pharmaceuticals. With college like this one, CMU and also Qatar University, uh, where there are students from pharmaceutical, uh, in, in the pharmaceutical college and the biotechnology, we see that students also will be participating in those industries. So we need to put a, a strategy and vision with the, with, here together that our, our people who are going to be working in those facilities will be our, our students, our, our children, our sons and daughters that's going to be part of the, of the production facilities. So I am really optimistic and I think the government of Qatar is serious about this and I'm sure they will find ways to uh, uh, support the local manufacturers. So that's what I'm saying. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmad. Next, I have a question for Dr. Imad. Uh, working at the Ministry of Public Health at the state of Qatar and being responsible for local pharmaceutical industry in Qatar, you have a unique perspective of the challenges that are facing the pharmaceutical industry in the state. From a, definitely from a government point of view, would you please elaborate on these challenges and tell us about your perspective? Thank you very much for the introduction and uh, I thank uh, CMU for taking initiative to discuss uh, such a dynamic industry, which is the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, uh, at this panel, we'll be dis uh, discussing from a different perspective. Uh, I would uh, emphasize on the issue which is very indigenous to Qatar, that is the market size. The market size uh, of Qatar will be very limited and that affects the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, the take uh, home message which I want to emphasize here is uh, we need to establish a scope or an objective for the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, uh, some of the example is either we want to secure uh, a drug availability in the country or we want to make Qatar a hub where much manufacturer uh, technology makers, uh, innovator companies can use Qatar as a hub where they can produce and export uh, medication. Uh, there is also a need, as uh, Dr. Ahmed uh, mentioned, uh, to update the legislative framework to include all those aspects of pharmaceutical industry, uh, biological and biosimilar uh, production in the country. And, uh, I also think uh, the government is fully supporting the pharmaceutical industry and there is a lot of work going on now uh, to be dedication for, uh, there will be a dedication for the pharmaceutical industry in the country, maybe Dr. Ahmed, Mr. Hussein also, they are aware of all this uh, uh, work. Uh, I, I'm sure also uh, people like uh, Dr. Ahmed have uh, struggled a lot to establish such an industry because they are, they are the pioneer. And when you establish a new industry in any country, you will face a lot of, lot of struggles. But uh, I'm sure uh, with their help, with their support, we can uh, work out on it. And uh, I think this can be this. Thank you very much. Dr. Salvino, as a senior director of implementation and VPRDI office management, how do you evaluate research and development activities in Qatar, especially with regards to their contribution to the pharmaceutical industry? Thank you for the question. Uh, I wish I had an answer, so I will try to build an answer. Uh, First of all, would you mind if I stand up? Absolutely. Go you know, I, I have some Italian DNA. For me, it's very, very difficult not to move. Uh, let me ask a few questions to the audience. Uh, when did you raise your hand last week? 
uh, for medical reason. I mean, not if the doctor is your husband or wife, but if you saw a doctor for medical reason over the last seven days, please raise your hand. Not even 10. Okay, now raise your hand if in your bag, pocket, in your car, you have any kind of drug, you know, uh, antibiotics, uh, uh, you know, pills for throat, uh, syrup, Panadol, aspirin, name it. You see? You see what that mean? That means that pharmaceutical industry and healthcare are not as as we may think. Okay, so two, two other data. Um, in, in Europe and the US, on average, adults get their car fully checked two and a half times per year. But they do a full health check, preventative, once every two years. So maybe we are more interested, and we check our emails 40 times a day. So maybe we are still much more interested in checking our emails than in our health. And the last data, very interesting, is that if you ask undergraduate, freshly undergraduate students a very simple question, in your opinion, can viruses provoke cancer? Do you know how many say yes? I'm talking about undergraduate students across different disciplines. On average, between 30 and 35 percent. Okay? What's very interesting is that if you go to the zoo and you ask the same question to the chimpanzee, of course, the likelihood is 50%. So, I mean, we are not even able to pass the chimpanzee test when we talk about our own health. That highlights three criteria. The first one uh, is that market for pharmaceutical is much bigger than market for healthcare. The second one is that the awareness of healthcare is still very low. And the third one is that the knowledge about healthcare and pharmaceutical, it's even lower. These three ingredients show that there is an amazing room for and a huge space to create a new pharmaceutical industry. Now, we all agree on the fact that pharmaceutical requires a very, very high capex investment upfront. But when we talk about pharmaceutical, it's not only making drugs. Pharmaceutical, it's a full chain. Uh, full chain, you know, including many things drugs for very specific diseases, drugs or semi-drugs or para-drugs for well-being. Uh, and pharmaceutical industry, it's very differentiated uh, uh, as per the scope of the production, but also as a value chain. You are in pharmaceutical industry is like you. You have a company producing uh, some drugs. You are also in the pharmaceutical industry if you are just a data scientist doing 3D modelization of, uh, of molecules. You may not know anything about human health, but that's pharmaceutical industry as well. And you are in pharmaceutical industry as an academic, in a university lab, in a research center, in a private, in a company research center. So the, the difficulty is also to create a matrix 
a, a multi-dimensional matrix taking into consideration all these criteria and as a matter of fact in QFRDI we try to see that space of the pharmaceutical industry which are the segment which are the scopes where we as Qatar in Qatar Foundation can make a difference. You know, there is no point for us to try to compete with uh, white label uh, producer in Bangalore. Uh, but maybe we may compute or uh, we may compete with um, uh, or in the field, I don't know, out of the blue of, of diagnosis kit. Maybe. So that's what we are trying to do. So definitely, yes, there is an interest, but the interest is also based on the fact that the market is underdeveloped, our knowledge is underdeveloped, and our awareness is underdeveloped. Thank you very much. Thank you, Salvino. For Dr. Omar, as the executive director of QBRI, Qatar Biomedical Research Institute, you oversee one of the major research institutes in Qatar. How does the research conducted at QBRI help the pharmaceutical industry and is there for example a focus on translational research that might lead to new drugs and medications? First of all thank you very much for the invitation thanks to the Dean for this uh, really important uh, discussion. Um, uh, QBRI before I answer your question I want to give a brief uh, overview or description of Q Qatar Biomedical Research Institute. Uh, we, Qatar Biomedical Research Institute, QBRI, is a national institute operating under Hamad bin Khalifa University. Uh, we conducting uh, translational research. Uh, our goal to um, improve the, the um, healthcare uh, through uh, innovation to provide um, um, better prevention, diagnosis, treatment, um, and we can only achieve that by conducting a translation and high quality research. Um, so currently, QBRI uh, operating three, re uh, three research centers, one focus on cancer, the second one focus on diabetes, which is the biggest and important uh, for us. And the third one, which is unique for not only for Doha, but for the whole region, is focus on brain-related disorders uh, like autism, uh, uh, epilepsy, and neurodegenerative diseases, and so on. So that's Kubrai. Um, we managed to attract uh, eminent scientists because of the infrastructure we built. Uh, HBKU and Qatar Foundation invested uh, a huge uh, amount of building a state-of-the-art facility, state-of-the-art labs. That's really one of the best, not only the region, and I can assure you if you visit, and maybe some of you visited our, our facility, is one of the best internationally. It's really impressed everybody come and visit us. So. By having the such facility, we've been able, as I said, to attract eminent scientists. Also, we currently we conducting a state-of-art research uh, funded directly from the government or Qatar Foundation, and also funded by uh, external funding. Go back to your um, answer, your question. You might be surprised. QBRI, as a young research institution only established 2012. We are the only biomedical research institute, not only in Doha, the whole region, that attracting international funding, competitive international funding. Not only that, we are attracting big pharmaceutical companies investing in here in Qatar and Qatar and, and Kibari, where we're helping them to establish uh, uh, advanced tools for diagnosis for some uh, neurodegenerative disease and investing over a million dollars on that. This is only happening in QBRI in the whole region. You might be also surprised, back to you, answer your question, QBRI scientists have been selected by AFRIS, which is a pharmaceutical company from, uh, from uh, Austria, um, to evaluate a clinical trial conducted in Europe. 
We are the scientists, the only labs that evaluating that clinical trial. That's a big achievement for us, and we are proud, and I can tell our young scientists and researchers that we can do and uh, competitive research, and we can contribute to the pharmaceutical industry, and we are now funded by Lundbeck, one of the CNS, biggest CNS uh, companies uh, in the world. So I hope that I answer your questions, and we, are, we have more coming. And uh, not only that, I'm, I'm now I've been talking to, to Dr. Ahmed uh, early, I think we can contribute to the local industry. And I'm very confident, QBRI and with our lo local young scientists, we can enhance this industry and make it to, the, to competing and achieve our goals for Qatar and for the region. That's our goal. And we definitely will contribute to the humanity by developing new tools, new uh, ways of treating uh, complex diseases. I'm very sure of that. Thank you very much, Dr. Omar. At this point, I would like to open the floor to questions from the audience. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Fumaya, and I'm a pharmaceutical quality professional. I have a comment first on the discussion and the point raised, which I'm going to reflect on my experience, which I have it in Ireland. And the second part, I'm sorry, it's going to be a little bit long. And the second part is actually a question to the regulator and to the pioneer in the field as they started the business in Qatar. So the comment first that I've been in Ireland for 13 years. I worked in different pharmaceutical company. But what I've seen there, the flourishing uh, of, the of the industry in Ireland. And, and the key thing that I witnessed, I've been part of it, like being a student or being uh, working on the pharmaceutical industry, is that the education, the government and the, the education institute, they work together with the pharmaceutical industry to tailor their education to the need of the industry. And that is not an easy thing. And I'll give you an example of that. For example, there was one of the postgraduate studies is well known if you go to any of the international company that they have a hub in, in Ireland, they will know that master. What's unique about that master? Most of the lecturer there, there were people that they were in industry, they were expert in industry, and they know what they need. Ireland for, for a while that they, they needed to have uh, and ABI companies because they were struggling with getting the materials over and opening the, the, the branches from the US or even within Europe to compete the other countries. So at that stage, the concentration on most of the topics in undergraduate or postgraduate was trying to qualify as much as you can people that they understand how to handle this part. Then they move next as, for example, I'm jumping because there is a lot of things I can take, but I don't want to take the whole time. They move to be a pioneer in the biopharmaceuticals. And, and I've been one of the, the, the lucky people to be part of that team where they started an institution for research and training, and it was the first in the world. And what they were trying with that building or the pilot plant they have is actually to have a hands-on and know about the technology up to date, what's happening in the biopharmaceutical, providing lectures and training programs tailored to the need of the companies there and working even with the company themselves, brought the, one of the biggest research group on that place. So that getting the country and the people ready for that, that one part regarding the, the comment. Then I'll move to the question. As I have seen over there, or what I hear here in Qatar, I've just recently moved to Qatar, so I'm learning what's happening there. But I can see you're going towards a big change happening in the company, in the industry. And to make that happening successful, you need two things. The first thing, the regulator, the regulatory body, they need themselves to be ready. And that will be my question is, as you were approaching this and the move to open new companies or new industry, are there the plan ongoing on getting the, the regulator ready for this to help the industry and at the same time to be up to standard with what's going on? And then for the investor, 
you know, like from a business perspective, I know you need to satisfy a cutter locally and not be in a situation panicking for getting medicine from us. But from an investment perspective, if there is any work as uh, this is what we need, this is there is it's not negotiable. That's what we need to have in Qatar. That will be top priority. Next, what will you have in the region? If things went or goes at the it's supposed to be, what's the market? What's the next step? We shouldn't, you know, like it's always successful to be ahead of the game. And what will be the target is the next step after you you satisfy Qatar needs. Thank you, and sorry for being too long. I'll let Dr. Imad answer this first. Thank you for the question. Uh, uh, the first part of your uh, question or comments about education and collaboration. This is an example where the government is taking step ahead. We collaborate now with uh, Carnegie Mellon University, Qatar Foundation, Qatar University, so that we can make awareness session, so that the students, the scholars, the researcher, they are aware that there is a pharmaceutical industry happening here in Qatar. There are already people investing, and there is a lot of steps have been taken in education uh, uh, portfolio. You mentioned about the ABI knowledge, biopharmaceuticals initiative. Uh, it's all about investment and the capital which is coming down to the place. And uh, we, we cannot force them to go to that uh, aspects. For example, ABI industry is very massive. It's uh, not economic friendly and it needs a lot of uh, logistic and resources. And uh, uh, you were you uh, asking about the readiness. Qatar uh, has has been ready a long time ago, and I'm sure a lot of people here know that uh, uh, Doha Declaration was signed for TRIPS agreement about the generic and uh, extension of uh, generic licensing. Uh, now the Ministry of Public Health have taken initiatives and we are expanding our uh, human resources. We are also updating our legislative framework so we are sure that we can work with our uh, colleagues and the investors uh, to make a unique uh, pharmaceutical industry in the country and in the region. Thank you. Dr. Ahmad? Yeah, uh, I, I really, uh, uh, your question and uh, the way that you, your experience is really great to, to hear about such experience, especially in Ireland, and uh, how the integration between uh, government and uh, organization, private sector and public sector, and so on. And also uh, education and research and, uh, and uh, universities. Uh, Qatar really, as we see today, we have great institutes around and great people around researcher, uh, educator, uh, students, we, we don't have anything really missing. What we are missing is the integration between all these brains that they can come together. The challenge right now, because we're talking about pharmaceutical, Qatar before, the, 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 it was not really that serious about having a pharmaceutical uh, industry in Qatar, because as I said, you know, in, in pharmaceutical, you can, you can import anything you want from around the world. But today you want to say, really, we want to be part of the world and we would, have, we would like to have an industry. So it's not just a, a word to say. Many things that are going to happen, and I'm sure Dr. Ahmad here, he mentioned that uh, we are, inshallah, we are ready. But still we need a lot of work really to come up with where we are heading. Um, as you said, uh, pharmaceutical industry is, is a huge and uh, and when we're talking about uh, research and development and for new molecules or uh, generic, even, even first day products, we're talking about just molecule just came out of uh, patent and you want to uh, get that molecule. Uh, still, uh, it will be nice really, the experience that you talked about, that we can see it here in Qatar. I hope so that uh, one day we will have the integration between uh, the the R and D arm and uh, and the education and the production and manufacturing, uh, it doesn't come overnight. As you see, you know, I've been in, in this for more than five years. It, uh, the the industry is very difficult and raw materials, APIs and all that. Really, it would be very tough to establish an API here unless. Uh, uh, you are having an external market because, as you know, the population of Qatar is not uh, that big to establish. Even for pharmaceutical industry, you cannot say, just I, I just would like to establish industries openly. You have to grow and uh, go gradual. And that's what we are doing here. Even in my facility, I don't go for 
biotechnology and uh, new biosimilars and all these things, but starting with the generic products, things that are highly need. We put a vision 2022 for our uh, Q life. And we looked at all the molecules that's already been uh, taken away from the market, from the, the, our neighbors that uh, their products used to come to us. So we put this as a challenge. And we said, look, we will try to replace those molecules as soon as possible. Of course, with the help of, of, of the regulatory and the support of the government. To, uh, in that 2022, we would have most of the needed, uh, highly needed and highly consumed molecules in generic range uh, in Qatar through QLife or maybe other, other uh, facilities. So it's a, it's a challenge, it's a, a long way, but I think we have already started. We are already, the government is thinking seriously about uh, this industry and it is a necessity. And His Highness the Emir, Sheikh Tami bin Hamad Al Thani, he mentioned uh, the uh, medicine security, okay? And this is very important. And we have to really be serious about it and continue, no matter what are the obstacles, because I know there are so many obstacles. And maybe I face so many obs obstacles, but we are really going to make the success here in this country, of course, with all these institutes around. It's marvelous and it's an opportunity. And really, I, I've been thinking about the upstream and the downstream. Downstream is the industry. Upstream is the brain, the intellectuality. And I see here many intellectualities. I hope we can bring those intellectualities to the uh, new, new products, new uh, development in the state of Qatar. Thank you. Thank you. For the sake of staying on time, I'm gonna thank the panelists today. Thank you all for joining us and giving us your perspective. Definitely, at least I'm more enlightened now about the pharmaceutical industry, so I hope the audience are as well. I would like to invite Dean Trick back to the stage for his closing remarks. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's thank the panelists for their insights. Okay, I hope we have learned something uh, today. It's interesting to have the wide range of players in the pharmaceutical market, and we're very grateful that you spent time uh, with us this afternoon. We do have a uh, commemorative plate to recognize the, uh, the uh, opportunity, so if you'd like to join me in the center, I'll provi be providing the plate. <laughs>